Biggie, just 24 hours ago, you was trying to get Jonathan to beat on uh, Saucy Santana. Now Natalie got an ass whooping pendant for you. You see how karma work? Fast, don't it? Let's talk about it, baby, because this is a big bad deal. <laughs> Let's go, Piggy. Oh, shit. Here we go again. to make it better my name is big mouth and this is my channel if you have not been here before baby do me a favor do yourself a favor and do my jawbreakers a favor like comment and subscribe subscribe for me daddy subscribe for me daddy subscribe for me daddy let me see your grill and do me one more favor just one more turn on my post notifications so you can be alerted when i upload a new video girl let's talk about it baby so yeah, big. Mm -hmm. So y'all don't know what happened. Basically, last night at a booking, um, Natalie Nunn got into it with Biggie. Okay, Biggie Smalls, Biggie Back, Big all of that. Okay, Miss Piggy, y'all remember? Um, y'all know who I'm talking about. Um, the one who used to be the underdog, but got a little bit of clout and became a fan favorite after Baddies West, and now she just bullies other baddies and tries to make them roll her blunts and screams at them and jumps them with other girls and do a whole bunch of petty stuff, and she's a lapdog for Tzatziki and Anna. Yeah, her, that baddie. So, what ended up happening was, per the video, because we don't know what's actually going on in the baddies' house, but we can tell what's going, kind of, you know, get a little clue to what's going on from the video. In the video, we have two videos. One where Natalie Nunn, well, actually, I'm sorry, this is the only video, because one video I saw, it only had the uh, the argument what Natalie was saying on the mic, and the other video, it showed the, what happened before. So, I'm going to just use that one. Anyway, long story short, what ended up happening was Natalie told the DJ to play one of Stunner Girl's songs. I don't know what's going on between her and Biggie in a baddie's house, but y'all know how Natalie and Biggie go through they, go through their times. And at the end of the day, the, 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 the bottom line to the whole drama is this. Biggie, you came on the show as a as a, as a as a fugly fat bitch, okay? You was a crybaby. You still a crybaby, okay? You're weak. You cry. You can't fight, and you fat, okay? Um, Natalie never respected you. She's never gonna respect you because she don't think you on her level, looks wise, money wise, and none of that. Honestly, to tell you the truth, you're not. So, um, she's never gonna respect you. I don't know what you did, but I mean, every every few few months i feel like natalie does something to keep to put biggie back in her place um we're gonna talk a little more about that and what that does for miss natalie nunn's ego in just one second but we're gonna get back to the story so she goes ahead and plays one of stunner girl's song i guess biggie gets to her feelings and grabs the mic and starts talking shit to natalie you know calling her fake as fucking all of this that and the third which i don't know how natalie can be fake to you when she never liked you ever so um after that natalie grabs the mic and she's starts talking about, you know, well, no matter who the baddie is, if they've ever touched my platform, then I'm going to promote them. It's just business. It's nothing personal or whatever the case. And Biggie is still in the background now just going in on Natalie, talking hella shit from, from like across the little, across the floor. And Natalie just snapped and said, well, bitch, since you talking shit, get prepared to get your ass beat tomorrow. video kind of ends um a few things here a few things to note 
This is not the first time we've seen Natalie and Biggie get into this power struggle. This is not the first time we've seen Biggie trying to fight for her respect. This is not the first time we've seen Biggie get disrespected by Natalie or Zeus. And this is not going to be the last time. I made a video about this about a year ago um, about DJ Sky and Biggie when it came to the respect that they did not receive from Zeus and why they should leave the network. Um, I personally think if Biggie had left the network now in 2024 today, I feel like if she had listened to me back then, she probably would be a nobody. <laughs> cause I don't really see anywhere Biggie could go. Cause I mean, she can't go to not as TV cause she can't fight. So I just need to tell you the truth. The only card Biggie can really play is the funny fat friend. So, cause she can't fight, you know what I'm saying? She can rap a little bit so she could go do that. But as far as reality TV, I don't really, I don't see a place for Biggie in reality TV. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, you soft, you cry all the time, and you can't fight. I don't really, I don't really see a place for Biggie. Now, when it comes to Biggie and Natalie and Zeus, I've said this before many a times, and I'll say it again. They've never respected you from the beginning, and they never will. Many times when, well, first, before we go there, let's let's go here. Let's be honest about what happened to Biggie. Biggie glowed up. You know what I'm saying? Biggie was the the ugly fat one in all them jumpsuits. Oh, she still wearing the jumpsuits, Lord Jesus. Um, but she was the, the ugly fat friend, you know what I'm saying, who cried a lot the first season, who was getting bullied around by Stunner Girl, getting called everything but the child of God. You know what I'm saying? It looked like she was scared to fight Stunner Girl all the way up until that second to last episode when she punched Stunner Girl in the mouth. And I felt like that kind of gave Biggie the sympathy card, the underdog card, and the redemption card. And everybody loves a good redemption story. Everybody loves a good... Um, um, last to first, I guess you could say, story, you know, um, bottom to top, whatever you want to call it, you know, uh, 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 the gutter to the, the gutter to the riches, whatever, rags to riches, I don't know what the fuck you want to call it. Anyway, Biggie went from being the disrespected fat joke to being the fan favorite because she punched Stunner Girl in the mouth and she was hanging out with Tommy, so she got cool points for that. And I think that love and adoration from the fans kind of went directly to Biggie's head. And a lot of times, some people, some people, you know, everybody come from something. Nobody was, nobody was born rich or famous. So everybody comes from some kind of a background. And But a lot of people come from, you know, a worse background than others. And when you've been downtrodden as much as Biggie has, you've been the ugly fat friend, you've been the dark-skinned Dominican in your family, you know what I'm saying? You've been shitted on constantly by family, friends, and everybody you've come across. You don't get the good niggas. We done seen Biggie niggas cheat on her when she had money. You know, she gets that kind of treatment. You know, she was a security guard before she was a baddie. And I'm not trying to... I know this is reading. I know this is reading. But I got to give y'all some context here, okay? I'm trying to put a story together. You was a security guard before baddies lying and saying you was a club promoter. Um, and when you come from that to all of a sudden having thousands upon thousands of fans, thousands upon thousands of dollars at your disposable. Uh, I said disposable, girl, Lord. Disposal. You know what I'm saying? All of these things. Um, um, designers want to make you clothes. You're getting fashion over deals and stuff like that. When you come from this all the way to that real quick, um, it can inflate your ego. You know what I'm saying? It can make you feel like you're better than others. And I think that's what Biggie did. I think she started relishing in that moment. She had a very uh, 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 mean girl, Katie Heron moment. You know, we saw her on Baddies East to where she was doing a smiley. You know what I'm saying? Talking to her like she wasn't shit. She was trying to get Anna to roll her blunts. Then she get on here punching Bianca Bonnie in the head and all of that shit when nobody's looking. Talking shit behind people's back. Being a mean girl with Anna. And... Personally, I feel like her whole friendship with, with Anna and Tzatziki is her looking up to them. They are they represent two things that Biggie never had. Anna is beautiful, skinny, Dominican, beautiful, skinny, light-skinned Dominican. Something Biggie never was, and she never got that to live that life. So she looks up to Anna. She wants to be that. And Tzatziki is the big, aggressive, respected, authoritative figure. Biggie don't get none of that. She don't get respect, authority, none of that. So I feel like with Anna and Tzatziki, she got two friends that represent two things she never had in life. And she clinged to them because they she lives vicariously through them. Now, when it comes to Natalie Nunn and how she sees Biggie, she's always seen Biggie in that light as that beneath her fat charity case. 
And once Biggie got the fan favorite and she got the clout, started getting all the bookings and the gold, she would start buying the chain, the diamond chains and bought her a house and, you know, going from here to here doing hostings and shit like that and, and rapping and stuff. Biggie came up socially, but Natalie couldn't accept it and she never will because if she accepts that, she has to accept the fact that she looked at Biggie as less than and now she acknowledges her as an equal. OK, if she would stop bullying Biggie, if she would stop treating Biggie like a flunky, if she would give Biggie the acknowledgement that she feels like she deserves, she would have to admit to herself that this bitch. Who was just lucky to be here is now on my level and Natalie won't do that because her ego won't let her do that. And that's what I meant when I said, Biggie, you should leave the network, because no matter how far you go in life, Natalie and Lemuel, too. They will never admit that you are equals. Well, well you're not an equal to Lenny because he got way more money than all y'all. But, and Natalie got way more money than y'all. But socially, I feel like y'all are equals. I'm just going to be for real. Socially, I kind of feel like all of y'all on the same show, so all of y'all kind of equals. But Natalie is never going to give you that, okay? So when it comes to situations like this, she's always going to take these digs at you, girl. She always going to do something to show you that you're just not good enough, that you're just not on her level. And Biggie, from your personality and how you respond to these different things, like when she was putting your bags outside, you know what I'm saying? Or when she was trying to make you choose between her and Tommy and, um, you know, now, you know, all of these things that Natalie was doing to you. And when you said on the reunion, like, oh, you don't call me. We not close like that. You don't you don't call me like you call the other baddies and all that other crazy shit you was talking about. I feel like you are begging for mommy's attention. You are begging for Natalie to see you as an equal. You are begging or itching for her to validate you. And that right there is always going to leave you in a position to fail because that creates a power dynamic in which you are a losing party of. Okay? When you ask or beg or, or request for a motherfucker to validate you or to give you your tens, immediately what you are doing is saying that their opinion is valuable, more valuable than your own because your opinion matters over mine. I think I'm great, but it don't matter what I think. I need you to think it. You immediately put yourself in a subservient role. You immediately put yourself in a, 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 a place right back at the starting point to the charity case. So you getting upset about her playing Stunner Girl music or calling her fake validated her in ways you'll never understand. Okay, Biggie? You you stroked her ego last night when you got upset. You got to learn how to let shit roll off your shoulders, especially when it comes to Natalie. And you have to learn to live without Natalie's approval because Natalie sees you. She sees your glow up and she respects it. She respects it so much that she has to act like she doesn't. To make herself still feel whole. You see what I'm saying? Because in order for her to acknowledge you, she has to, it's, it's gonna, she gonna, she feels like she's gonna lose something. She's gonna lose a part of that ego. She's gonna lose a piece of that pride. And she never gonna do that. So, like I said to you many a times, Biggie, and I'm gonna say it again, shut the fuck up. Okay? You either gonna shut up and take the treatment and be the ugly fat friend. And you're not ugly, Biggie. I'm just giving you that card, the ugly fat friend card, because this is that's just the role. Okay. Or you gonna branch out on your own and, 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 and maybe start your own show or start your own network or, or go do or start your own label or whatever the fuck you do. Start your own crew of party promoters and whatever you're gonna do to become the big biggie you keep telling everybody you are. Cause right now you're just doing what everybody else is doing. You just going from booking to booking and making YouTube videos and making motherfucking YouTube songs. Okay? Your YouTube career then went down, okay? I don't know if you're doing music no more, but we don't see that coming from you no more. And you're getting the same bookings that the baddies is getting. So kind of, you you kind of on a level. So you're going to need to branch out and become boss status like Natalie and Lemmy. Or you're going to have to just shut up and accept the treatment or go back to being a regular bitch that nobody care about. And that's what it boils down to, Biggie, because all of this, you crying every... Biggie, we tired of seeing your fat ass complain. I'm so, I'm tired of hearing a big bitch with a husky ass deep voice. To, you, you fake. Oh my God. Why me? Oh my God, Natalie. Why you treat me like this? Why you do me like this? Oh my God, Tommy. Oh my God, Siki. Siki. I'm tired. Get up or get the fuck off.
Get your fat ass off the ground and stop being everybody's motherfucking doormat, bitch. And be okay with just being your motherfucking self and shitting on these bitches. Or get your fat ass on somewhere and go hold the purses and glue the wigs and oil the scalps, bitch. And lotion the ankles. Either you're going to be the help or you're going to be the star. But the star can't constantly keep crying about why other people don't call them a star. Or why other people don't see them as a star. Okay? And I'm going to just tell you, just give you a me, bitch. I ain't never looked to another YouTuber for no validation. Is there some YouTubers who before I started my YouTube years ago when I was a teenager and stuff, I thought they were great? Yeah. But that ain't got shit to do with me. Bitch. I see my subscriber count. I get the DMs every motherfucking day about people telling me how they can't wake up without watching one of my videos. I have a fucking fan who, uh, who's on chemo. I'm sorry to put your business out there, but I got a fan who's on chemo who told me the only thing keeping her going is me and my videos. Okay? I don't need no validation from no other bitch because I know I'm that nigga. You got to know you that bitch, Biggie, and you got to just be that bitch. Okay? And it got to be good enough. The money got to be good enough. The recognition from your fans got to be good enough. You can't keep harping on this. I got to be validated by all the other baddies because they don't see you as equals and they never will because you a big bitch. Biggie, they can fuck any man you get. They can wear clothes you'll never fit. They can get in clubs you'll never enter. They can get into parties with elite celebrities that you'll never get into. That's why they'll never see you as an equal, bitch. So you got to go get your money up. And not your funny up. And put your foot in these hoes necks and show these bitches that all of that shit don't matter. The only thing that matter, bitch, is these boss moves. That's all you can do. Or you just got to go cry about it in the car. Because I'm so tired of seeing you get bullied and crying to Natalie about her being this and being that. But I'm going to tell you this, bitch. You better whip her ass. I don't want to see that show and see you bitching out to Natalie. I don't want to see you copping, please. I don't want to see you trying to hide behind Tzatziki. I don't want to see you trying to hide behind Anna. I don't want to see you trying to make no excuses, bitch. Okay, shut that husky ass throat the fuck up. Put up them fat ass fists and knock Natalie the fuck out, bitch. Like Roly did, okay? When she slapped that bitch. You better go get your motherfucking lick back in blood, bitch. You get it back in blood on that hoe. Beat the respect out of that bitch. I don't know what to tell you, sis. But right now, I'm going to be for real. And I'm just talking to Natalie. Fuck Biggie now. I'm sorry, I didn't gave you your spiel. Natalie, this... I don't know why y'all keep bringing Biggie back. We have, we the people have requested y'all get her to fuck off the show. She has no purpose. She's boring and she clearly want to be the, she clearly want to be the sidekick to everybody. Okay. I don't know why y'all keep bringing this bitch back. She ain't gave y'all a storyline in two seasons. So I don't know what's going on with her. Okay. That's to you. But at the end of the day, sis, she here. Okay. She here. And while she's here, I mean, try to treat the bitch like a human, at least, Natalie. You ain't got to be an uh, irritating ass bitch about it. But I understand why Natalie is how she... Now, I don't understand why you used to treat her like a flunky in the beginning because she never did nothing to you. But I understand now why you try so hard to assert yourself over her. And I think it's due to the fact that Biggie has become a mean girl. And that's a hard pill to swallow when you go from underdog to straight to mean girl. Bitch, you didn't even go to the cool ass bitch in the middle. You went straight from underdog bitch that nobody cared about, that everybody laughed at, to being the bitch that was telling bitches to roll her blunt and, and, and walking in baddies' houses talking about this our shit. Like, you went straight from here to here real quick. And you were supposed to be the cool bitch in the middle, Biggie. You were supposed to go from underdog to cool-ass bitch. And I think you missed the mark. But that's all I got to say about the topic. Y'all draw down in the comments and tell me why y'all think Natalie and Biggie got into it. Why y'all think Natalie played Thunder Girl music to begin with. And who y'all think going in out of Natalie and Biggie. Because honestly, to tell you the truth, neither one of their hands is really hands like that. But I got confidence that Natalie will still work that bitch like a 9 to 5. But y'all let me know. And uh, I'll talk to y'all later, babies. Bye.